Okay, welcome to lesson 2.1 on errors. Let's jump in, let me share my screen. We're gonna be looking at errors. And so errors can be scary because they bark at you and you're like, what happened? I don't understand what happened. But if you just kind of take a deep breath and look at the error and try and understand what it's trying to communicate, communicate to you, uh, they can be helpful to help you get past problems with your code. So the objective of this lesson is that students will identify and distinguish three types of errors uh, in their code. <clears throat> so those three types of errors are presented in the book. I'll just click into the book here for my lesson plan. I have it linked to there in section 2.1 and chapter two. Okay. Um, what we have here are syntax errors, runtime errors, and semantic errors. Okay, syntax errors are things like where you're missing a parentheses right here. They say, okay, you know, parentheses, open parentheses, one plus two, close parentheses is legal, but eight closing parentheses is a syntax there because there's no corresponding opening parentheses, right? So that's syntax. So in computer speak and computerese, you might say, syntax refers to the way code is written. That's different from syntax and linguistics. In linguistic study, syntax refers to the way sentences and clauses are formed, right? So in computer speak, syntax, a syntax that refers to something wrong with like the code you've written. There's, there's some error with the code. Okay. Uh, runtime error um, doesn't appear, like they say here, it doesn't appear until the program has started running. That's quite, why it's called a runtime error. And these errors are also called exceptions because something exceptional or bad has happened. Okay, so we'll see the word exception later when we talk about try accept blocks. Um, but in computer speak, exceptions um, is another name for errors and specifically runtime errors. And then semantic errors is a third type of error. And these perhaps are the most tricky because the program, Python, the interpreter doesn't tell you there's an error. Because what happens is the, the program will run without throwing an error, but it will not do the right thing. It won't do the right thing because you, the programmer, or the person, right, wrote the code in such a way that it's not doing what they thought they were asking it to do, but it still runs and it does not throw an error. So that semantic error is kind of the most tricky, perhaps, to identify. Okay, so here's a quick little formative quiz. <clears throat> um, here's some, another example, other examples real quick uh, before the quiz of runtime error. For example, trying to string concatenate a string with an int or a float without first converting the int or float to a string. Or dividing, uh, trying to divide a number, whether it's int or float, once again, float just means a number with a decimal point by zero. Okay. So here I just have a few, what, seven situations and you're going to identify the type of error of uh, the following situations, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and figure out what type of error you have here. Ready, set, pause. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look here. A says the programmer wanted the first three letters of each word but the program gave him or her the first four letters. Okay, that would be a semantic error because it didn't, doesn't, the program didn't error out. It finished running, but it didn't do what the programmer thought would happen. So that would be a semantic error. So the programmer just needs to change the code uh, to only get the first three letters, not the first four. Okay, when we look at string slicing, we'll, we'll talk about how to, get parts of strings out of larger strings. Here, what do we have? We have print, open parentheses, single quote, hello, close, single quote, plus four, which throws a type error. And it says, must be string, not int. Well, right there, right? A four is an integer. So that would be a runtime error, right? We're trying to concatenate, string concatenate with this plus sign two different types, a string plus a integer, and you can't do that. You either have to have both integers or both floats, that is some number on both sides of that plus sign, or you need to have two strings on either side of um, the plus sign. 
and then we would concatenate. So that's a runtime error. Here, this looks like, uh, I mean, if, if we have a comment here, we have a hashtag, right? Prince, last letter of word. And then we have another hashtag, print hello, uh, open square bracket, minus one, closing square bracket, closing parentheses. This, the fact that the person left this hashtag in front of what he or she wanted to actually happen, feels like a semantic error. Like you didn't, you know, it's not gonna throw an error. Like the interpreter won't error out on this. It just won't do this. It won't do this line because it has that hashtag uh, which starts a comment. So it, it feels like a semantic error. Just, the programmer didn't realize, oh, I need to get rid of that hashtag so it actually runs this bit of code right here. Okay. Remember, uh, our letter D says the programmer tries to take the log of zero, which would give you like negative infinity, um, which I think I'll call a runtime error. Um, let me see real quick. I'm just going to jump over to PyCharm and try that. Uh, let me just open up a console real quick. View tool windows, Python console, and just do whatever number divided by zero. Yeah, it throws a runtime error. It says uh, zero division error, division by zero, which gives you negative infinity. Just a little bonus real quick in R. If you try that, um, excuse me, what? Oh, I said the log of, of zero, which would give you negative infinity. Anyway, it would it's, it'd be runtime error. E says print hello world, but there's no closing um, parentheses. You see the opening parentheses right there, but no closing parentheses. All right, that is a classic and um, classic syntax error. Let me just copy that and try it over in, in PyCharm here see it's actually waiting to say hey you're not you haven't finished your parentheses yet i need a closing parentheses it's it just keeps going so anyway that's that is um syntax there because the syntax that is computer syntax that is the characters on the in the code is not correct here what do we have we have print what's your name and then we have a comment on the right side but the observant programmer will notice that there's no hashtag. There should be a hashtag like right there to stop the interpreter from interpreting this stuff back here. But there was no hashtag, right? So this would just be a runtime error. Yeah, I guess the syntax error probably, yeah, I guess the syntax error should be quite exact. Yeah, it's just gonna say, hey, you, you, something's going on there. I can't figure this out. Um, I call that a syntax error. It's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work because you're missing that hashtag there. Um, perhaps it's a semantic error. I called this a semantic error up here. Anyway, it's an error. And then zero division, um, that's a runtime error. We, just, we saw that a minute ago. With, uh, so when you divide by zero, it gives you a zero division error, which gives you infinity, which doesn't, doesn't like, doesn't really handle. Um, just to show that again, I'll jump into Python. Seven divided by zero gives you an error or an exception, a zero division error to be exact. Interestingly, in R, R is another programming language that I use a lot for my research. If I do seven divided by zero, it'll just say, hey, that's infinity. It doesn't error out, just say that's infinity. But anyway, in Python, it's, it's a runtime error. Okay. That is a quick rundown of errors uh, in lesson 2.1. See you next time.